Jones and what, what do you feel you can bring to the role? Uh, I think I just bring a team first mindset. Uh, that's all I've ever tried to do when I, when I play for the team. Uh, and that's all I'm going to try and do. I've got plenty of leaders to lean on, plenty of experienced guys in this team, so I'm not going to try and do anything above and beyond, just focus on what the team needs and, and hopefully let my rugby do the speaking first. Surprise, Conf Yes, yeah, sorry. Can we just push the Janos a bit further that way yeah, so that he's not so slight on for us? Thank you. Did you get a heads up from Joe, a little private coffee date, or was it a bit of a surprise when it happened? No, it was a full surprise. I was, uh, yeah, pretty nervous Tuesday morning, trying to hopefully be in the 23, and um, yeah, it was very privilege to be able to start and then just saw the little uh, captain's arm man underneath that and was uh, yeah it was a big surprise it was <laughs> Joe didn't give me any little heads up or anything like that and uh, I think the way that's the way he likes to play a bit keeps cards close to his chest but um, yeah it was a massive honour a really special moment not only to be back in Wallaby Gold but to be able to lead the boys is uh, yeah it's just been a, an awesome week. Have you was, it was it done in front of the team? Lynn? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a it was a whole team announcement. Um, you know, one through twenty three. Um, pretty special to be able to share that with uh, with seven debutants as well, uh, and a few guys making their way back into the jersey after a long while. So uh, it was a really special day, and it's been a great week so far. Who's the first person you called? Um, what was their reaction? Uh, probably called the missus first, just to, to make sure I was in the good books there. Uh, and called mum and dad a bit after that. It was a bit of a weird one. We were straight on the bus to Daisyville to do training, so um, you know, didn't want to do that in, in front of everyone. But sent a few text messages saying, um, you know, back in the team, everything, and, and how special it was to be named captain. And then uh, made the calls around lunchtime after we finished Test Match Tuesday. How does it feel that? Um the lineage when you look back as 89th Test captain, and you see a name like Liner there as a previous captain and yet the prospect of, of playing with his son tomorrow, how does that feel? It's exciting and it's just so special. Um, yeah, Noddy sent a, a nice message to, to Tom um, and, and, to, and to me. Um, so, you know, when you look at guys like that, just the amount of pride they have in the jersey and that's what we're really trying to instill. You know, looking forward towards the future always and giving as much as you can into the jersey for the next person. So that's uh, the focus I'll be doing on and, and I think it'll probably sink in a bit more after the game and to, just how, uh, how important it is and, and how cool it is for, for Australian rugby and, and for my family as well. Do you get a sense that the captaincy is something long term for you or is it just for this test or did Joe sort of explain what he's thinking long term? Uh, look, I don't think there's a huge long term view at the moment. I think it's, it's, it's probably uh, just focusing on this series at the moment. Um, you know, I'm going to do the best I can and, and, uh, and in this jersey for as long as I get to. Um, I don't think there's any huge decisions made on, on going past this too much at this point, but um, look, I'm going to try and represent the jersey as best I can, represent the role as best I can, and then um, leave it in Joe's hands after that. Take us into your journey the last few years. It's been a little bit different to years gone by. Like, How has that been to the point where you're going to be rolling skip tomorrow? Yeah, um, it's it's been an unusual journey. Um, I, got a, I got a taste of Wallaby Gold quite early in my career, and, and it was so special. And, um, but I think being away from the jersey with injuries for the last three or four years, I think my last test match was just under four years ago. My last time in the squad was, was three and a bit years ago. So having to watch from afar and especially when my body wasn't um, able to do the job, it was, it was tough. But um, I think that's built me more into the man I am today. Uh, I feel a lot more ready now in the squad than I probably did four years ago. And I think I can add a lot more to the team. Um, and that's all I'm going to do. I think uh, I am proud of the resilience I've shown and, and uh, fighting my way back here. And I think there was always a belief in the back of my mind that if I could get my body right, play a full season, play consistently, I think that's what I pride my game on, then I could find my way back into the squad. And, and yeah, this is an absolute blessing and a bonus. Talk us through that adversity in the last few years lately. Uh, look, it's been it's been tough because I a lot of the injuries I, I don't look at as, as not being prepared and not being ready. Um, you know doing a shoulder, scoring a try, coming down from a line out a bit funny and your ankle popping, sort of things like that. It was a lot of stuff out of my control, which took a lot of uh, inward looking, I think, and soul searching to be able to put that past, let go of the anger and the bitterness and just move on to the next job. And, um, you know, one thing I think I really did learn, which I think helped my, my leadership probably is, is, all right, I'm not able to play, but what can I do to support the boys and support the team? And um, I feel like I've been able to bring that back now that I'm on the field and, and uh, just have that as my, my sole mindset. And I feel recovery-wise, process-wise, all that sort of stuff, mentally, physically, I feel in a better place and uh, I'm going to try and bring my all. Can you just talk a little bit about what you're Last expecting from Wales tomorrow and what the team needs to do to counter their game? 
Yeah, I think Wales are going to be very combative. Uh, they, they've got a big forward pack. They like to play that heavy style, especially around the breakdown, and I think that's where they're going to put a lot of pressure on us. Um, I think we've seen a lot of test matches where if the forwards don't front up around the breakdown, that's where it can really cost you. Um, I think we've chosen an exciting team, uh, lots of uh, enthusiasm in the debutants, I think, but I think for us to really un unleash that uh, exciting backline that we've got, the forwards need to do the job up front. I don't think Wales haven't won here since 1969, I think. Is that, does that sort of stuff come into play with you? Is that extra pressure or you don't think about that sort of thing? Look, we're not really thinking about that. A lot of the focus this week have been around us. You know, obviously, we've had a little bit of a short preparation, but focusing on us, the systems we can get in place, the connections we can grow during this week. Uh, Wales will throw a lot of things at us, but I think if our systems are strong, if we fight and are connected together, we'll we'll do well. And um, you know, that Wales team, uh, they've obviously had a lot more wins than in, since 1969. Obviously, with the World Cup last year, that was a, a difficult one to take, but lots of learnings have been made, and and we can't wait for Saturday. Last one, please. Uh, really, really tough. Wanna... A really tough World Cup for the group, like a bit of a new chapter for Australian rugby of sorts. Has the playing group recognised that and how has this been spoken about this week in terms of trying to move past things from last year? Yeah, that's one of the things I've been really impressed with is, is obviously there's been lots of talk about the World Cup and things like that, but it hasn't just been swept under the carpet. It's been a lot of learnings. You know, we've showed a lot of clips from that game on areas that we could have capitalised on but didn't, areas that they capitalised on that we need to be wary of. Uh, but the boys have really taken it upon themselves not to just hide away from it and shy from the fact, but to actually learn from it, grow themselves, and uh, not only as, as players but as people because it was a challenging time. Uh, and I think from all the guys I've spoken to so far that they've really learned from that experience and are going to use it to grow themselves in the Wallaby jersey.